Welcome everyone to the Wrestle Pie. Subscribe now for more pro wrestling and pop culture content. For me, on a deeper level, the sadness comes from the fact that in 2019, I had convinced some friends who are not really wrestling fans at all to attend a lucha show with me in London. Ruben Cordero's Lucha Libre World, a show in collaboration with another wrestling company which had been interested in for a while, Lucha Britannia. I heard so much about a talented British wrestler, Cara Noir, and was intrigued to see his unique blend of mysticism, peacock feathers and excellent in-ring acumen. I have always wanted to see proper Lucha Libre performed live, and then I heard that Silver King would face off against Juventud Guerrero in the main event. My excitement for this unusual blend of pro wrestling magic had me buzzing. My friends, they were varying degrees of sceptical, but with the mariachi band ringing around the arena, some comedy matches to get the crowd on their feet, and a lot of margaritas in our bellies, we were all having such a great evening. Until the match which I was most excited about took place, Two legends from my childhood, Juventud Guerrero vs Silver King. I'd been telling my friends about the two characters for days leading up to the event. When they made their way to the ring, I felt like a little kid again, and for me, that is a huge part of why I love pro wrestling. What happened next was horrendous. As the match got into its groove, after a fall to the mat, Silver King seemingly could not regain his feet. He was laid out, heavily panting on his back, not 10 metres away from us. Being the smart that I am, I grinned to myself as my friends turned to one another saying, Oh no, he's injured, I hope he's okay, and words to that effect. But I knew, all these years of watching wrestling, I knew that any minute now Silver King would pop back to his feet and regain his momentum, only to alight the crowd of his explosive power. I was waiting, longer and longer I waited. The referee was checking on Silver King and called Hooventude over to the pair. He then pinned Silver King and was declared the winner. This is when I began to suspect something had gone wrong. EMTs and trainers ran from the back and people started to try and resuscitate Silver King as the stewards in the arena hastily shepherded us out of the doors. It had taken them all so long to react. Surely this must have been part of the show. But no. It seemed to be part of the show at first, a member of the live audience shared with Camden News Journal, but then he didn't get up, and then the medical team was on the stage, everybody was cleared out, and lots of police and ambulances were there. I can still hear that moment in the arena to this day. The lively crowd had died right down, and it was eerily quiet whilst Hooventude and the referee attempted to pick up Silver King, it felt like an eternity as confusion spread around the seating area. As UV started to clap and try to rally the crowd, it worked, but only for a moment or two, in a sea of almost silence. People around me started chanting, Silver, Silver, and a few others around the stand began to follow suit. But for some reason, in hindsight, it was so haunting, so uncomfortable, as those who were crying out began to subside with only a few small voices echoing out in the room. Then the most memorable part, seven of the longest minutes of my life occurred. As Silver King struggled to take his final breaths, suddenly everything became frantic. Those in the ring attempting to aid their fallen colleague seemed panicked and uncertain. Arena staff in bright yellow began ushering the fans out of their seats and we solemnly walked away from the ring and out into the street. Nobody around us knew what had happened, as hundreds of sad and concerned wrestling fans, many of whom were still wearing their decorative lucha masks, left the arena with questions and hypotheses. Some were still insisting it was part of the show, mere moments before the ambulance sirens rang out around the corner. Blinded by the neon lights, we made our way onto the train as those around us searched through the internet on their phones for an update. The coroner investigating the incident explained, In every way, there was a failure to properly plan to ensure that everybody knew what they were doing, that procedures were in place so that, first and foremost, a person who became unwell in the ring would be identified immediately. 
a media effective defibrillator assisted CPR would have given Mr. Gonzalez a significant greater likelihood of survival. It seems Mexican wrestling does not have the same procedures in place as other sports such as regular wrestling or other martial arts. Hijo del Santo said, We never left him alone. The paramedics were there almost immediately. England is a first world country. The fans cooperated fully and left the venue without any protest. The promoter Ruben Cordero brought them best medics. Silver King's co-workers were with him the whole time. Not once did we leave him alone. My experience was a tremendous feeling of impotence I can't explain. The show was over so abruptly and we headed for the underground tube station. The sounds of ambulances and police sirens muffled the crowd's questions about what we'd all just witnessed. But it wasn't long before those dark questions had an even darker answer. The show was over so abruptly, and as we headed for the underground tube station, the sounds of ambulances and police sirens muffled the crowd's questions about what we had all just witnessed. However, this man's death has pushed the entire industry to be more aware of the signs of these injuries and changed the way in which wrestlers view early telltale signs of heart damage. Many still feel that at smaller wrestling shows, a professional display of proper preparation at crucial moments is often lacking, with some accusing wrestling promoters and business owners of being unwilling to pay for the fees required to ensure these adequate safety measures are in place. Mascaro 2000 Jr. said, Please let's not be hypocrites with talks about athletic commissions and how now we're going to start demanding better working conditions for wrestlers. No, just stop to think. The only friend a wrestler has in the ring is himself, not promoters or these big wrestling companies. The only one left that is humane is the wrestler. That's the way it's always been. I don't want to try to hide the obvious. In Spanish the saying is, try and cover the sun with one finger. The same thing happened with El Ejo del Puero Aguero. 15 days, up to a month we saw ambulances at the venues, but no more. Now, I know that is miserable, but I wanted to highlight how Silver King died doing what he loved, entertaining the crowd and being the best showman he could. I mean no disrespect when I say this, but what a fucking hero. The man finished the match as he was dying, and that speaks to just how much Silver King loved pro wrestling. Silver King really are recognized for breaking through and and being the catalyst for you know a, a pop culture kind of phenomenon here in the United States that almost everybody is familiar with now. Silver King died doing what he loved. He was pushing his body further than most can imagine through brutal training regimes and hard stretches, travelling from show to show. He was entered into the AAA Hall of Fame in 2019, as I believe he has every right to be there. So, in my opinion, the very least we can do is remember the sacrifice which this man unmittingly made and hold up his legacy as we remember the name, Silver King.